My name is Kevin Folta. I'm an associate professor and currently serving as the department chairman of the Horticultural Sciences Department at University of Florida. I studied uh, biology as a major at Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Illinois, and then did a master's degree in DeKalb, and then a PhD in molecular biology uh, and postdoctoral work at University of Wisconsin. Well, I feel that I'm a credible source of information on this particular topic, mostly because I don't, my main interest is to keep the science straight. Uh, I'm not really interested in what the companies are doing. I'm not really interested in what the activists are doing. My goal really is to be a referee. What I want to do is connect what we know about science to what we need to know about growing better, more nutritious food. So my role is really very neutral. I come strictly from an evidence-based standpoint. I follow the science and don't worry too much about what people think and feel. So my viewpoints on this are completely consistent with that of the larger scientific organizations, National Academy of Sciences, World Health Organization, American, um, American Academy for Advancement of, Soci of Science. Um, just about every scientist and every scientific organization will come to the conclusion that this technology is extremely reasonable, that transgenic technology or GMO technology poses no more risk than conventional farming. And that is the scientific consensus, without a doubt. Many people will tell you it's not. But in departments across this country of independent scientists like me, uh, there's no question that this, is, uh, that this is a reasonable technology that has an outstanding safety record. That over three trillion meals have been served, it's estimated, containing GM ingredients, and not one link to some sort of a problem. So the scientific consensus says that transgenic technologies or GMO technologies are no more risky than conventional technologies. And I would say they're a whole lot less risky. The reason they're a whole lot less risky is because plants are wonderful, are wonderful factories for all kinds of products. Um, they certainly make their toxins. They certainly make funny allergens and things that people react to. Um, plants do this. Many of these have been bred out by traditional breeding because we only kept and propagated what didn't kill us or make us sick. But traditional breeding can concentrate toxins or allergens in one place. And uh, it's been several examples, such as the Lenape potato and certain kinds of celery, which were increased for something called sorolins, which led to um, very strong skin reactions. Uh, traditional breeding can concentrate deleterious genes. Uh, it can happen. What's nice about the GM technology is that a gene is never introduced until we understand what that gene does. The two major genes that are in crops these days, the EPSPS gene, which confers Roundup resistance or glyphosate resistance, and the BT gene, which confers insect resistance to certain earworms and uh, certain cotton pests, we know exactly what it does. Uh, people use it in organic cultivation. We um, understand how they work precisely. So it's no big surprise to be able to engineer these into the plant and, and understand what they do. What's nice is that today in science we have tremendous levels of detection for the presence of a gene, the presence of its product, where it's located in the genome, we can tell you all of that. So it's very simple to gain a very quick accounting of what the inserted gene is doing, if it's doing what we think it's doing, and if it has any other collateral effects. All can be assessed very quickly. You can't do that very easily with uh, traditionally bred crops. Uh, I eat GMO food every day. Um, it's in 70% of our food. Um, I don't have the energy or the interest or the, um, or the money to want to try to avoid it.